How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video we're going to change the brakes on a 2012 Honda CRV. It's a fourth generation meaning 2012, 13, 2014, 2015 and this is an all-wheel drive model. Yours may be a two-wheel drive or it might be an all-wheel drive model. We're actually going to be doing the rear brakes however it's the same very similar process to the front brakes i apologize for the noise in the video there are guys doing a roof next door they are making a ton of noise as you'll see thank you guys so much for watching if you haven't already please give the video a thumbs up if you aren't already subscribed to the channel subscribe so you don't miss another project and let's get into the video first thing you're going to want to do is loosen your lug nuts you want to make sure you do that while your car is on the ground and then you're going to jack your car up with your lift make sure you use jack stands for safety check to make sure that it spins once it spins you means you're all the way lifted off the ground and take the lug nuts all the way off and once the lug nuts are off you'll be able to remove your wheel now we're going to hit it with some penetrating oil around the hub on these two phillips head screws and let that soak in while we work on it now we're gonna have to get off this brake caliper holder and there's two bolts, one at the top right here, one at the bottom right here. There's a rubber boot on the top and a rubber boot on the bottom that lets you know if you're on the right bolt. These are a 12 millimeter on this side, but for some reason they were a 14 millimeter on the other side. So yours may be a 12 or a 14 millimeter. We're gonna put our crescent wrench on that bolt and then we're going to hit upwards on that crescent wrench, which is going to turn that bolt to the left coming from that direction to loosen it up. As you can see, I loosened the bolt. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the bottom one. It's very important that you use a crescent wrench here, not an adjustable spanner because you want it to fit exactly without any room for error or stripping. Once they're loose, they're pretty easy to get out. And there they are. They still have some anti-seize on them. And then you're going to grab, be able to grab this part and pull it off. But ours is sort of seized together. So we're just gonna jiggle it. And we're gonna just tap on it. And we're just gonna jiggle it. And hopefully, it will eventually come out. There we go. You can see that this brake pad is not in good condition. We're going to remove this later. Right now, we're just going to put this to the side. You do not wanna let it hang with tension on it. I just have it up here resting on the CV axle. This part of the brake, I don't know what it's called, but they are supposed to move in and out like that. This bottom one down here is seized, so we're going to tap on that, pull on that, try to get that unseized, because that could be part of the problem that we're having. So I don't think that uh, caliper pin. But I can't get this caliper slide out. Uh, I think it's seized, uh, but I can get this entire piece off. I will do that right now. And for that, we need our 17 millimeter. It goes to two bolts. There's one bolt here and then one bolt up here. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna lock that on and then hit it with the hammer. Somebody forgot to put on anti-seize. All right, cheater bar to the rescue. I actually couldn't get off with the hammer, so I had to use a socket. That gives me enough leverage to get a little bit of a turn. They were just super tight. I cannot get this caliper pin off. So we're going to go to AutoZone and see if they have a replacement one of these. Because it wouldn't be a project if you run into parts that you don't have on hand and have to go get them same day. When you could have just ordered them cheaper on Amazon. Oh, you guys have a vice to... 
I put it in the vice just to whack it at the house, but it couldn't, couldn't without adding heat to it. Yeah. You take the boat in the phone. Huh. You get too close, it'll pull it out. Dude, that one's, that one's really... Let's turn it. So we just got back from the auto parts store. The first place tried to sell me an assembly with this, with a caliper. We didn't want that, so we went to discount auto parts. And they sold the piece, but rather than selling me the piece, the guy just grabbed it. I took a butane torch from behind the counter tried to get it off that didn't work so we went in the back i held a torch to it he held a torch to it for about five minutes it heated it up enough which expanded the metal and it was able to loosen up the pin but he did torch the boot in the process he didn't have the little rubber boot in stock so we went across the street to AutoZone, where we originally went to get the part that they didn't have it and we got the boots so if yours are seized, you can torch it with a propane torch. It expands the metal. I knew that, I just didn't think about it at the time. I'm not a mechanic, I'm just like you, kind of doing this as it comes and is given to me. So we have the pin, we're gonna brush it with a wire brush, try to remove more corrosion. And you should be able to get a replacement boot in with some persuasion. There is a little lip in there so you match the part with the lip press it in kind of rotate it around something like an o-ring tool or an o-ring setter would be nice but i'm just rotating and pressing hoping that it seats and with some persuasion some pressing we were able to get it to seat Actually, it was just like pressing with a stick around the sides. You could use a toothpick, or maybe if you had an O-ring pick, that'd be ideal. And then we got this stuff over the counter. Maybe not totally from seizing, but it's gonna lubricate it. So we got the boot on after twisting it and pressing on it, and getting that little rib to seat. You can even squeeze a little bit inside the boot. And then we're going to press the pin in rotating it, getting it in there nice and good, spinning it, letting that grease penetrate down into it. All right, maybe I put too much grease on. And then we're going to press it all the way in and you can see that it went over the lip right there. And it should be springy like that. The other one moves like that. I'm actually gonna add some grease to the other one while I have all this on my finger. All right, so back to the actual rotor removal. We're gonna take an impact driver, put it into that screwdriver hole, and then tap it with a hammer. It should loosen, and then you can rotate it to the left. There are two of these, one over there. This tool puts a hammering force while turning, and it loosens up these bolts that'll usually be seized on. Now you wanna get the actual rotor off and you can hit it with a hammer to see if it's seized. Luckily ours isn't too bad. It's coming off. You want to make sure your emergency brake is off at this point because if it's on it's going to be spreading the brakes. Enough hits you should be able to release it. There is this little dust cap. We're going to remove that just grabbing it from the inside and pulling it through. While we got all this out, we're going to hit it with some brake parts cleaner. And grab our new rotor. We're going to spray this with some brake parts cleaner. Apparently they come with an oil on the surface. Then we're going to line it up. There's two threaded parts where the bolts go. We're gonna line it up. Line it up with the little conical part. And you're gonna take these two little screws that we took off earlier that look like it's a Phillips head, but it's not really a Phillips head. It's some sort of Japanese head. Put a little anti-seize on them.
I changed this to the tightening, the uh, right setting, before I had it on the loosening setting. And that gives it a little bit tighter of a tap. Sets it in. I forgot to mention this. If your rotor is completely seized, you can take a bolt. It's called like a sacrificial bolt. And you bolt them into this hole and that hole and you tighten it and it'll push it against the hub and it'll pull it off. Uh, I have a bolt that is a 5 16 inch 18 by 1 and those, I'm not sure if that's the exact threading it's supposed to be, but if it's the bad rotor that you're getting off then using those will work perfectly fine. Now we're going to be attaching these clips that came with our brake pads. We have our new brake pads here. We're gonna be attaching the clips. They just press on like that. It just gives it a nice smooth surface to rub up against. They go in on both sides. Remember those 17 millimeter bolts? We're reinstalling those. So you wanna hand tighten them with the anti-seize already on the threads. And then you're going to Crank them down nice and tight, and then the top one nice and tight, and then we're still going to give it some taps to tighten it. You don't want to over tighten it. There is a torque spec. Over not tight enough and under too tight. Depending on how worn the brake pads are, you're going to have to press the piston back in. I did it by hand on the other one. This one's a little bit more seized. So with the brake pad, the old brake pad on it and a C-clamp, you can tighten it down. As you can see, it's pressing the piston in slowly. I do have the brake reservoir open under the hood so that it uh, can expand while pressing it in because it needs to have some place to go. So I'm just pressing it in or we're just clamping it in with your new pads. It's going to be a tight fit. Okay, we're gonna take the old pad off now. Look how shot this thing is. Nasty. Okay, then we're gonna hit this with some brake parts cleaner. Pretty gnarly as well. I wish my brake parts cleaner was working correctly, but we've lost all compression on this old can. So now I'm just shaking brake parts cleaner into this. I'm gonna take your new brake pad. It has this claw that has to go into the brake piston. So that might take you gotta press the legs of the claw into the piston. That helps to center it correctly. I'm trying not to touch the surface of the brakes to get the oil of my hands on it. You gotta press in on these little claws while pushing in on the brake pad to get it to go into that little hole. There we go, we, got, we have progress. Okay, so that's what it should look like. It's all the way in. It's all the way flat, it's all the way around. Then we can pull that caliper over to that other brake pad that we already set in place. Press in, make sure everything's lined up. You gotta put in those bolts that we took out earlier, righty tighty. Make sure that they are anti-seized. Make sure you t torque everything to spec. There's an inner bolt, that's the pin head. You can hold that with a 17 while you tighten the back one, which will be a 12 or a 14, and that'll keep the boot from spinning. Now we're gonna have to put our tire back on. It's about to rain. The neighbors are making entirely too much noise. I'm running out of space on my memory card. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you tighten the lugs in a star pattern and then put the car in the ground, tighten them all the way, get everything torqued to spec. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, subscribe so you don't miss another project. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye. And I forgot to put that little plug in right there. You can shove it in. I think it's just a, I don't even know what that is, but it goes right there. 
I forgot to do it. It's raining. Don't forget to put that in.